here's my VirtualBox configuration. I have a number of virtual machines that I've created, a Windows 2000, a Windows Vista, a Windows XP machine. And I can start them just by clicking on them, and it launches that operating system. I'm running Windows 7 here on my desktop. You can see the toolbar down at the bottom. If I wanted to run Windows Vista, I click the Start button, and it goes through a process of starting up my Windows Vista operating system. VirtualBox boots up. It's going to, I have a, a fake CD in there, a CD image, so I'm not going to boot from that machine. Let's move my screen over to my other monitor here. So let me drag it back for you to see it. And it's going to start up Windows Vista. So I have a real copy of Windows Vista running in the background here. It's going to have all of the operating system configurations, all of the normal drivers and video and keyboard, and all of the things that you would expect to see in Windows Vista. But in this particular case, it's running on my Windows 7 desktop. Now, one thing to keep in mind, no matter which virtual operating system software you want to use, there are certain keys that you're going to need to have available. Notice I'm moving my mouse around, but that isn't moving the mouse inside the virtual machine. If I click anywhere in the virtual machine, I will get my mouse to become focused just to that VM. And so now when the mouse is inside that VM, I can move my mouse around Vista. But notice I can't get out of the box. I can't get out of the machine to be able to go back to Windows 7. With all machines, there is going to be a special key. And if you look here at the bottom right, it says a right control key. And if I hit my right control key button, my mouse frees up. And now I'm back to my host operating system for my machine. To go back to the guest, I simply click anywhere in the guest. And if I click there and I use my keyboard and I use my mouse, the focus is just in that guest operating system. To pop back out to Windows 7, I hit my right, right control. And I'm back in my Windows 7 desktop. So I can go do other things. While behind the scenes, Windows Vista is booting up, I could go do whatever I'd like to in Windows 7. So already you're starting to see the value here of being able to run these multiple operating systems all at one time, all from this one place. And I don't have to have reboot machines. I don't have to have separate pieces of hardware. It's really very convenient and very easy to do. And with Sun VirtualBox and these other programs, it's very, very inexpensive to be able to do this. If you're planning to use a virtual machine for your studies or just use normally, here's a few tips for you. First, make sure you find your installation CDs or DVDs. You're going to need, at a bare minimum for A+, Windows 2000, Windows XP, and Windows Vista. Now, I'm running Windows 7 on my desktop. There's no reason I couldn't build a Windows 7 virtual machine to run in there as well. Maybe there's some things I'd like to play around with or try with Windows 7, but I don't want to do it on my host machine. You can certainly have a host and a guest, the same operating system. It doesn't matter. Anything you do in your guest operating system has no effect on your host operating system. It's a beautiful thing. You may also want to consider taking those installation disks and turning them into ISO files. Uh, this makes it very, very quick. Instead of you having first to have those CDs or DVDs available, and then to access the data that's on those CDs and DVDs can, can be time consuming. To be faster, you can take everything on those CDs and DVDs and encapsulate them into one single file, one single disk image. You can create this image from your original CDs or DVDs with a couple of different kinds of programs. One is called Image Burn. You can find that at imgburn.com. I use that one all the time. Another good one that I've used in the past is one called CD Burner XP that you can download directly at cdburnerxp.se. I also like to use, uh, just as another tip, an, a website called Ninite.com to install a lot of these programs. If you go out to Ninite.com, it allows you to install many, many of these very, very popular and very common programs with a couple of mouse clicks. I use that all the time. And you can install both ImageBurn and CD Burner XP right from Ninite.com. Another thing that's really useful if you are running something like a virtual box or running Microsoft Virtual PC is there's a, an idea of called snapshots. The snapshot means I can take a snapshot of an operating system, make a bunch of changes to it, change partitions, install different programs, uh, completely delete the operating system. And if I ever want to go back to that place where I took the snapshot, I click a button, and it all reverts back to the original config. This is really, really useful for studies, especially if you're working on an operating system that you'd like to maintain. Keep it at a snapshot state, add a program to it, then go back to the original form and add another program to it just to try different things out. And that way, you won't corrupt or create problems with partitions or operating system changes or delete the wrong thing or screw up a registry. You can always go back to that snapshot. Really useful to have in a virtual machine. 
Well, hopefully that's given you some ideas about how you can take advantage of virtual machine technology. Really useful to have on your computer. Even if you don't use it for the CompTIA A plus studies, you'll certainly find ways to take advantage of it in the future. For any of our other A plus videos, to participate in our message boards and much more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.